Hello, welcome to lesson three here in Mastering Java. We are working with the concept of an array in Java. We've already learned what an array is and how to construct one and kind of how to uh, pull elements out of the array and, and things like that. Now I want to show you something practical. Uh, a lot of times you'll have an array and you want to quickly uh, read through it and figure out what the maximum value in the array is and what the minimum value of an array is. So uh, what we're going to do is just demonstrate that here today. So let's go ahead and create an array. Um, and we'll call it uh, something clever. Uh, we'll, we'll call it large array, right? And we'll put the brackets to indicate to Java that it's an array. Now the items that are going to be inside of this array are all going to be integers. That's why we have that out there. And I'm going to go ahead and initialize it with values right now. And I'm going to initialize it with 14 values. So 2, 11, 12, 13. It could be anything really, but we'll just start with this. We'll do 15, 25, 65, 34, uh, 54, 99, 76, 87, 10, and 54. And if I've done my math right, this should be 14 numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you can see this as maybe like the age of people on your, on your neighborhood. Maybe you take a survey of 14 people and you collect their ages. You're building a database or something and you store it inside of this, this array. Of course, integer works nicely for things like ages because you're always going to record it as an integer. So that's the array. And what we want to do is we want to search through this array and figure out what is the maximum age and what is the minimum age. Now we can see right now that the maximum is 99 and we can scan through with our eyes and see that the minimum is 2. But just you have to use your imagination. What if this array were like 10,000 entries long? Then we wouldn't want to do that by hand. We would want the computer to go through and figure it out. So we're going to write a quick algorithm to do that. So first we're going to need some kind of variable to hold whatever the smallest value is after we find it. So we'll call that variable smallest. And what we need to do is we need to initialize it to some starting value. Um, we don't want to just leave it empty. So let's go ahead and just initialize it to the first value in the array. Now in this case the smallest value actually is the first value in the array, but this is going to work no matter what. So actually just for giggles, let me change that so it's not a big problem. Let's put an 8 there and we'll change this one over here to, to 2 just so we don't have any confusion. So we'll set the initial value uh, to large array bracket 0. So what we're doing is we're saying that we're setting the initially before we do the searching we're, we're setting out and we're saying the smallest value here is equal to the 8, the first value in the array. And what we'll do is we'll do the same thing. For the largest value here, we'll say that it's a large array, again, 0. This is just an initial value to, to get started. We haven't done the searching yet. So we have a smallest and a largest value. We know that they're going to contain the number 8 uh, just from what we have, have written here. Now what we want to do is we want to begin the searching. So we need to go ahead and, and create a for loop to rip through and search through all 14. And I'll tell you, this is 14 elements. Uh, here. So we want to go ahead and do that. Now let's go ahead and create a for loop and we need an integer here. We could declare the integer for the loop variable up high but we'll just do it inside the for loop. Uh, integer i, let's go ahead and set it equal to 0 because remember when we look through arrays the first index is always 0 and then 1, 2, 3. That's how we number them. So we're going to start at 0 and then we're going to say uh, i is less than or equal to 13. It needs to be less than or equal to 13 because we know that there's 14 elements here and since we start counting at 0 this will be element 0, element 1, element 2, element 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the last element really is labeled element 13. There are 14 elements altogether including the first one which is as an index of 0. So we're basically scanning through the entire array from, in, uh, from in index 0 to index 13. That's going to cover everything. And then we'll just go ahead and increment uh, i++. Now let's open a bracket for our for loop. Go ahead and hit enter and let's go ahead and figure out what we're going to do inside of this for loop. Now as we scan through the loop, what we really want to do as we march through here is we want to figure out as we go through the 11 and we go through the 12 and we go through the 13, we want to compare it to whatever the current smallest value is that we have. And if we come across a number that's smaller than the current variable for the smallest value, then we want to use that as the new smallest value. So in words, you need to put an if here. Um, 
we're going to go to the current element that we're in, large array bracket i. So we're going to scan through as we go from 0 to 13. We're going to look at the elements as we go through there. If the element that we're looking at is less than this variable that we've created called smallest, it's the current smallest value that we found to date, then we need to have a then. If the new value that we investigate is less than what we currently have as the smallest value, then we're just going to reassign this smallest value to be what we just found. Make sure you understand this line. It's a very common thing in programming, uh, but you need to think through it logically. What's happened is we, we're going and scanning through every one of these guys, and we have a seed value. This is the initial value. We have to give it something, right? And if we come across an element of the array that's less than the current value of the smallest thing that we have, then we simply reassign the smallest value to be what we just came across. And that whole process is going to continue as we rip through it. So if we ever find anything smaller than our current smallest value, then we just reassign that value to the new smallest value. And the exact same logic happens when we're looking for um, the largest value. We're going to scan through. If we ever find a value greater than what we're currently calling our largest value, then we'll just say, and we'll assign it there. So as we march through all the elements, we're looking for anything that's smaller than our current smallest value, and if so, we reassign it to that variable. And we also look for anything larger than our current largest value, and if so, we assign it to that variable. So at the end of this guy, we when we rip through the array, we should, at the end of the whole thing, the variable smallest should contain the smallest value, and the variable largest should contain the largest. So let's go over here and print out the results and see if it all worked. We have system dot out dot print ln right and we can say something like the smallest value in the array is and we'll just print out this variable smallest and then we'll do another print statement system dot out dot print ln whoops we spell it right print ln the largest value in the array is largest. All right, so let's go ahead and save it here. I've got a misspelling here, so I'll take that out. Doesn't seem to be any errors now, so I'll go ahead and save it again, and let's go ahead and run it. Now look what happened. When we, uh, when we ran it, I get a bunch of a flood of messages here, which is not what I expect. And I could have edited this out of the video, but this kind of thing happens all the time when you program. I look up here and see what I've done. Inside of my for loop, I do the comparisons, and then I go and I print the messages, and I accidentally put these print statements inside of the curly braces for my for loop. I did not intend that to happen, so let me delete that. The for loop should end up here. The print statements are done after we've ripped through the entire um, array, and we've found what the smallest and largest values are. So let me go ahead and hit the save button again and let me hit this guy again. The smallest value in the array is now 2. The largest value in the array is 99. Notice that the value of 2 is about a third of the way through. The value of 99 is about two thirds of the way through. So even though we started with a seed value of 8, as we rip through the array we're constantly comparing a new value. So basically we try to say is 11 uh, less than the smallest value is 11 greater than the largest value that we have currently ha have. And if so, we make the reassignments and we keep doing it over and over again until we get to the end of the loop. So we can change this, for instance. So right now the smallest value uh, is 2. Let's go ahead and change this 54 to the number 1. And then let's change this 10 to 109. So we've changed the smallest and the largest value here. Uh, let's go ahead and run the guy again. The smallest value is 1, the largest value is 109. Now these are integers, integers can be negative, so I'll change this 11 to negative 24. Uh, negative values are always less than positive values, so if the math works out right, we'll hit run. The smallest value in the array is negative 24, the largest is 109. So I just wanted to show you how to, how to do a basic sorting through the array. There are different ways to do it. I'm sure you guys could figure out different ways to set it up. Uh, this is simply one way to do it. There's no right way to do it. Um, but it's one of those things that pops up a lot. Whenever you have an array, frequently you're looking through data, you're sorting, you're looking for maximum values. 
minimum values and things like that. So I mostly wanted to do this to show you how you can scan through an array and do comparisons, reassigning you know the results of those comparisons as we go along. When the loop completes, we've gone through every element of the array and what's left over in these variables by definition have to be what is the smallest and the largest uh, uh, values in the array. And we can make this array 100,000 units long with lots of additional data and it would dramatically uh, uh, speed up the process of, of searching through arrays like this when we use a, a loop like this rather than trying to do it by hand or some other method.